Hi, this is Country Guy North, and I'm Ginger St. James. Your music is, uh, you seem to stick with an old country type of sound, but people have also associated rock and roll, blues, uh, rockabilly. How did you come about finding your sound and how do you like to describe yourself? Um, I just say we do a, a mesh of country, blues and rock and roll. I grew up, uh, you know, with my dad, I'd go to the barn and he'd have classic country music on in the barn. I'd go to my nanny and granddad's house and they'd have big bands. Uh, I went to a lot of car shows since I was wee. So I know all the 50s and 60s hits. And uh, when I started playing guitar and had the band formed together, we all sort of had the same background. So I was genuinely inspired by the music I grew up with. And it wasn't anything mainstream. It was very 50s, 60s or classic country with you know Patsy Cline and Tammy Wynette and all that stuff. So I didn't realize how much it influenced me until we put the band together. And there is a song on your new album. I was not prepared for that question. It's uh, moon, uh, there's one, th yes, that yeah. song is very, very Patsy Cline okay. infused. So is that a big influence for you? Patsy Cline, absolutely. Like she is talented beyond be belief and she's influenced me vocally uh, to learn tricks from her. But Honeymoon Stage is a co-write with my friend Chris Altman, who also plays pedal steel on the whole record. Uh, he's fabulous. So that was the first time um, I really did a big collaboration. Snow Hill Slim, who's a guitar player, I know I write a lot together as well. Uh, so it was just a new little venture and it's a fabulous song. I, I'm in love with it. Heaven help me, I've been so in another journalist that wrote before that you either were very unlucky in your pursuit of romance or that you had a good eye for detail because you write such good heartbreaking love song which one was it it's a little bit of both um, I've definitely had hard luck in love and life you know and I just roll with the punches but that was written uh, just if uh, you know you have a broken heart what are you gonna do like poor me and pour me another drink, you know, kind of thing. So I just sort of got into the mood of how would I feel if I was completely heartbroken because I've been there before. So all my songs are really written from experience. And is it necessary to have suffered to write good country songs? I think so. Yeah. I think for like genuine country songs, yeah. There's gotta be drinking, there's gotta be, there's gotta be heartbreak. You know what I mean? Like I can't, I can't be a happy person and write a, a blues song, you know, or a, a sad country song. It just, I don't know. So it just, I just take all my experiences that I have and sort of channel that and try to express the feelings in the song so people can feel it also. Tomorrow when I wake up, he'll be gone. We won't make up, and I can't stand this breakup. It's more than I can take. So hey, bartender, if you please. Can you let us in a little bit, your own creative process? How do you go about writing a song? Is there anything special? Well, sometimes. It depends. I I like to say I purge songs. I know it sounds gross, but it's like all of a sudden, it's like, ugh, there's a song, you know? Like, it just comes out. Uh, I'll be in a grocery store, and I'll get lines in my head or something like that. But then there's other times, too, where I just write words down in a journal, and I'll sit there and be able to put something together if I sit down and be like, you're going to write a song today. So it's a little bit of both. I like to be able um, to be independent of the way I write, of when, it's, when it comes, it comes, instead of being forced to sit down and write. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a little bit of both, but I think it just sort of comes to me, and that's the best way I've ever written. So you're very eclectic, and one thing that I've noticed that I love about what you do is that you seem to be able to write about heartbreaks in a very kind of like uplifting, almost kind of like mocking way, like in the song You Were Mine. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Well, You Were Mine started out as a, a happy song, actually. Like, and it, it still has that happy vibe. Yeah. But I couldn't finish writing it. So I'm like, let's turn this around. Let's see what it would be like if your lover left you. And that's, 
you, you were mine and then you loved another, but it just was swinging and it couldn't have been this sad, depressing song. Right. It just had to be a little, I don't know, opposite. I like that. I like the contrast. Um, a lot of my songs have contrast. A lot of, a lot of them are tongue in cheek, but especially that one mm -hmm. was uh, difficult to write. But then once I got into the mood of going back to the heartbreak and back to the classic country, that's where it all came out. And I, I finished it in like five minutes and it was perfect. And, and then we recorded it, so. Wow, that's, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. So what is the place? Because again, starting from that place, what's the importance that humor has in your creation? Um, humor, I want to relate to people. Um, I, I do have a sense of humor. I, I'm kind of witty and crazy a little bit, but uh, I want people to relate to it in, in one way or another. It doesn't mean just because it's a song about heartbreak. I don't, I don't want people to be like, oh, I relate to that because I'm upset. I want them to relate to it because they know how it feels and that there's a little joke in there or something like that. To finish, if you will indulge me, because I just watched your show and it was gorgeous, you yodel. <laughs> But you do it in such a gorgeous way. Can you give us a few yodeling notes to, to go away? <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Ginger St. James. Awesome. <laughs>